Welcome back to Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. New, 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 new. Emergency Podcast Klaxon. We're doing it old school. Me in Australia at the crack of dawn. Benji back on Euro time without Luke. So Mrs. Rouge <laughs> also producing. But we had to get the pod in because there's some drama in the transfer news. It's been pretty dry, Benji, for last month. The just yeah. general cycling news, I feel. I feel like I've been sleeping for two weeks straight outside of our previews, which I'm enjoying doing the previews, but outside of that, nothing's happened so far. So every now and then we get like something like the Ajazer Decathlon announcements and so forth, which we'll mention in the Ajazer preview. But today, everything just hit at once and it all started at 5.15, right? 5.15 in the afternoon. Well, that's what the thing says, my times. I'm ahead of you guys. I'm a... I'm in a different day. I'm on the weekend already, so <laughs> you guys need to catch up. But You're from the future. Young, I am from the future. Uh, Visma, Team Visma, Lisa Bike announced that the talented Jan Oterbrooks, uh, the young Belgian on Borhansgrohe this year, will be joining Team Visma, Lisa Bike on 1 January 2024. 1 January 2024, uh, he will sign a four-year contract until the end of 2027. Now, the understanding was, well, not understanding. It seems he had a contract with Bora until the end of 2024. So, yes, it's a big shock. This is a bomb, Benji. Exactly. And I have this feeling that we knew that he had a contract going into next season is what we've we've heard throughout the season. And we also felt like there was some drama brewing, right? Because in the Vuelta, shit started stirring up. As in, first of all, there was a drama with Vlasov doing that team attack with some riders. And the then enemy, actually, after I this... think. What, sorry? I think it was Dense. Oh, it was that. Yeah, true. It was with Dense. And Kion commented about it, that he wasn't aware that they were doing that and kind of dissed that action by Vlasov and that, that bunch of riders. And then I think... Kion also stated that he was trying to show off his GC skills for Bora and other teams, which to me was a weird sentence to say. Very strange you, thing to say, yeah. That's something you say when you're trying to find a different team. <laughs> and then the third thing was that, I think it was mid-October already, that he started dissing the TT equipment at Bora, right? I swear he mentioned that. Um, I, I vividly remember the sentence, we don't have time to lose, that he said surrounding the TT equipment. So he wasn't overly happy there. And that was Chrono de Nation. Was it? Okay. So that's a specific moment there, early October there. There were whispers in the peloton already that Bora staff and riders didn't exactly like Kion very much. So something must have happened behind the scenes that we might not know about. But it started giving signs that he was trying to work his way out, in my opinion, is how I saw it. And... Then we saw rumors. Groupama was at a certain point mentioned for Kion. <laughs> there were other teams mentioned for, for Kion as well. And Yumbo was one of the teams that in the last few weeks also popped up for potential interesting Kion Eitebrooks. And I think about 75% of the cycling world was like, yeah, it's probably for 2025, right? Because Yeah. Well, I feel like it went up and it's like straight after those comments. We're like, oh, maybe a buyout will happen in a 2024 yeah. transfer. But then, as you said, we nothing the last two, three weeks. And I assumed, all right, he'll sit out the year on Bora. And then, <laughs> but it sounded like he was definitely going to leave. Like even I think Denk's comments were like, yeah, he'll be with us next year. And then, you know, we'll try to keep him. But <laughs> it, <laughs> um, I think they're, so yeah, but it sounded like he was definitely going to leave in 25 and whether that would be Ineos, Trek, Yambo, UAE or whoever. Um, but then, yeah, 2024. So we're thinking, like Yambo's article doesn't comment. It just says they've signed him. Daniel yeah. Benson's article as at 8.40. Uh, I don't know if that's UK or Euro, but that said that that contract was signed with Visma Lisa Bike on December 8th. So that's yesterday. Uh, no, two days ago. Two days ago for me. So Friday, December 8th. <laughs> but then we're not to the good beat yet. Yes. It goes full Oscar Piastri. Uh, exactly. Big drama. 
Like the whole F1 thing, if you don't know the context of it, there was this announcement in F1 where one team was saying that Piastri was joining and the other team was basically yeah. saying that he's staying with them. So that was a, a bit of a weird moment when he was, according to social media, contracted to for two teams for the next season. And that's exactly what happened here. Roughly an hour and a half after Visma Lab announced the Kion transfer, Bora came out with a statement saying, a statement concerning today's news from Jumbo Visma regarding our rider Kion Eitebroeks. Kion is and will remain a Bora member, a Bora Hansgrohe member. Also in the coming 2024 season, he's contractually bound with us until the end of 2024, December 31st. And I was like, fuck man, this is hilarious. Like, sorry, but the first th thought was me laughing on the floor dying after this because that's just... That's just a hilarious event, right? Yumbo announcing it, and then an hour later, that's the funniest <laughs> thing legit, that could have happened. It's legit the Piastri <laughs> thing. It's like, I, uh, without my consent, Alpine have announced that. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but yeah. It's fucking hilarious, man. You should laugh. <laughs> um, And so, yeah, that popped off the popcorn. So everyone's, but everyone's already like, hey, what the fuck? 2024 with Yumbo. And then... Maybe then people would be like, oh, buyouts happen. And then the Bora bomb drops. And then the actual bit with some more information, because the Yumbo and Bora releases don't really have much information apart from there's obviously some sort of dispute. But yeah. coming out of the agent of Otterbrooks after both those team statements on the AEJ All Sports Instagram, which uh, let me just check if I, I think. Uh, Alterbrooks reshared it. Anyway, I'll read it yep. out. He did reshare it. Um, which is the sports management agency of Pagatra, amongst others. They said the agreement between Kian Alterbrooks and Bora Hansgrohe has been terminated on December 1st, 2023. So one week before uh, Benson reports that he signed with Visma Lab. Continuing legal proceedings already have been initiated by Kian and the UCI is aware of the termination of the agreement. That's a very important sentence. Kian mm -hmm. is confident about the outcome of the, the pending procedure and also will refrain important. from further comments at this time. Of course, Kian is excited and looking forward to the future cooperation with Team Visma Lisa Bike starting next season. So, I want to jump on this for a second. I have so many questions about this. Specifically, why December 1st? That's one thing. Secondly, legal proceedings from Kion in this situation yeah. towards Bora, it sounds, in my head. Because you would expect if Kion breaks his contract, that would be the other way around. So that's exactly. something that is shocking to me. UCI being aware of the termination of the agreement means in my head that Kion must have reported whatever these legal proceedings are to the UCI. And in that way, displayed that in his, his part, he believes that his contract has been terminated. And then the next part is the outcome of the pending procedure. And that's in my head why I don't understand why the Yumbo thing was announced, why the Visma thing was announced. As in, if it's pending, and Kiel knows it's pending, and the agent knows it's pending, then how is Visma certain that they can get Kion like this or is that that's kind of the responsibility of Kion and his agent though yeah so if Kion and his agent come to Yumbo yeah and they say I'm a free agent I terminated my contract with Bora a week ago mm -hmm. it's not like that's the risk seems to be on Kian's part in that aspect the yeah. risk is here his dispute with uh, Bora Hanscra now I think sometimes, like, remember, it's an agent saying it by legal proceedings. Do they really mean a lawsuit or do they mean like a notice of termination that's a legal letter, like a, a letter with consequences? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So maybe not. It doesn't actually mean that it's Otterbrook's, you know, suing yeah. Bora Hansgro as it might imply. But yeah, it says. It, He's confident about the outcome of the pending procedures. So it's very, I think there's no magic in the December 1st date. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think that's just a random game. <laughs> okay. Because like when I when I thought about December first, I was thinking maybe there's a clause that opens up with something in December first, or there's a reason in the rule set that might free a rider in December first in in a certain event. And that's how I was like, maybe there's something there. But if there's not, then yeah. But then then there's not more that we can know without being behind the scenes either. And like, let's speculate here for a second. Borodis agrees with it, so there is no buyout, right? Because yeah. If there's a buyout, well, then there's an agreement to it between Bora and Yumbo, obviously. I'm pretty sure there was a dank statement maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, where it's like, ah, oh, if it, a team wants to come for Kian, that hasn't happened yet. But if it does happen, there has to be a tripartite agreement where the teams agree. Like, well, that's actually not the case. You can't have a explicit buyout like that. But yeah, it seemed he was not pushing a buyout off the table. Because, listen, if the writer's super unhappy and you can get money for them, then... But, obviously, if they disagree like this... Because, listen, Carlos Rodriguez had some sort of legal binding agreement with Movistar. Yeah. The level of how binding it was, we don't know. The teams yeah. don't know, because these things rarely go to court. Ineos wanted him. Don't know how nasty it got. Probably not, because we never heard peep. Rodriguez didn't yeah. say a thing. The two teams never said a thing. It seemed quite like we don't want this to go to court. Obviously, money went one way. The rider went the other way. Never goes to court. We move on. This is kind of when that agreement doesn't get reached. You get here, but the question is you can't just terminate a contract. You can't just be like, ah, oh, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So <laughs> the question then is, on what basis is he terminating his contract? Yeah, exactly. So the question is indeed, is Kion's contract at Bora validly broken? If no, then he's contractually stuck at Bora, but he's also signed with Visma now, according to Benson on, on the 8th of December. So if both are the case... And he's going into 2024 with two contracts. How does it work? Do you, does like does like Bora get him for the week, and then in the weekend <laughs> custody goes to Yumbo? Or <laughs> World Tour races, Yumbo get him. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what would actually happen is that he would probably he'd ride for Visma, and then mm-hmm. the legal proceedings will take a while to work out, and then whichever way they fall there'll be a financial settlement or not. But I've got two things here. We had similar situations in the past with, first of all, you have the Wout van Aert situation. The Wout van Aert situation back in the day, before he joined Lotto and Eliambo back in the day, was that he wrote for Veranda Willems Krelan in That was um, basically a, a team hosted by the company, its parent company, Sniper Cycling. And um, if I recall... They had signed a contract, or Wout had signed a contract with Lotto for 2020, but then Lotto wanted him a year earlier in 2019, but Sniper Cycling had an agreement with Wout that they'd want the compensation of X amount if he signed an agreement before 2020 with the team, and that is what created the the legal issues there, as in, he would go to Yumbo earlier than was according to the agreement initially. Which, if I recall, Van Aert lost that actually in court, if I recall correctly. Yeah, pretty but, sure. But that, that only got resolved like a year ago, I swear. Yeah, but there, Wout Van Aert was just riding for Yumbo the entire time. Eh? So it's not like he was on the sidelines. I do remember the moment where, wasn't there a moment where Amador wasn't allowed to ride for X amount of time at Ineos or something? I have a vague memory of something like that. It's about, I don't know. It, it This is why it's so hard to really know is this could be like a legal, a, fi, a fourth year legal exam essay question answer. You have a Belgian rider <laughs> on a German registered team with a Swiss governing regulatory body yeah. moving to a Dutch team. We don't know if he's self-employed or an employed rider i don't (laughs) i was never good at jurisdiction stuff i don't know which country's law applies but 
generally speaking, the UCI has their rules, but like the labor, whatever labor rules apply of whichever particular country, they will trump the UCI rules. So, for example, Wildfire was ordered to pay Sniper Cycling 662000 That was in mm-hmm. 2021. Uh, that legal battle resolved itself because there was an original labor court decision. So that was uh, half. They originally wanted $1.2 million and that was half to 662000 But Yumbo weren't a party to that, I don't think. It's like Wavana against Sniper Cycling. So here it would be Kian and Bora. Exactly. Are going to presumably what it looks like if Bora said, we expect all riders to be at camp on in tomorrow, <laughs> my time. <laughs> I, I don't think he'll be there. Well, then <laughs> it seems to be going that direction. Meanwhile, Meren Zema is just like pushing Kian under a bed. On the training camp of Visma, don't come out yet. Hide for a bit. Wait until the dust has settled. Then well, come they don't, out. They seem to be doing the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, they're announcing Otherwise him they before the have training camp it. starts. Yeah, true. Anyway, so Yumbo announced as well. This is still pending. Um, I don't know the the motive behind that, but if I take a look at the the whole picture, then I believe that Kian will be riding for Visma in 2024, regardless of the outcome of this. It might cost them a lot of money, though, <laughs> depending on how legally safe his yeah, which we contract don't know. Term- termination at Bora is. But he is riding in Visma in my head already in 2024. And if I have to give a reaction to that, like my initial reaction when, when the news came out was like, Keon's TT sucks. He's going to get better at TT at the team of Visma, most likely. Like, even if, even if he's desperately fucked when it comes to his physiology for TT, they're going to make him better probably than what he was. He was also commenting that the TT equipment was bad at at Bora or that he wasn't happy with it at least. I'm not sure how bad the TT equipment at Bora can be with the the setup they have, which looked pretty okay to me. It's pretty solid, yeah. So, but I do expect an improvement in that sense. I also feel like it's a team where he will have opportunities. So from Keon's side, I understand the transfer from a sport event. From Yumbo's side, I see it as well. Roglic left as their second GC option. They've got numerous young talent that could fill that spot maybe in the future. But Keon is the one that has proven the most in a Grand Tour in the Vuelta, for example, and could get close to that spot in the, in the near future if he can improve in certain areas, which Fizma might help him for. So from a team side, it's also a perfect transfer. So both bodies, perfect transfer. At Bora, the atmosphere wasn't good with Keon. So on that end, also pretty good transfer. Now, yeah, but not for Bora. They don't get anything. Exactly. That, that's the, that, well, they, they get a better atmosphere in the team, <laughs> but that doesn't buy you anything. They, they probably... Based on this, they don't get a buyout money, which was the case for the opposite around when it comes to Roglic. Bora paid buyout money for Roglic. So maybe they feel like they're, they're being stabbed in the back by having the opposite way not being paid or something. On the other right. end, I'm feeling like it's a, double, a double-edged sword to me. Because on one end, there's this feeling that a rider shouldn't have to stay with a team that he's not happy at in my head but on the other end that rider also agreed to that contract in the first place if it's a valid contract so it's kind of the dsm thing dsm agreed for certain riders to leave the team initially and then a lot of people started leaving so it's kind of a thing if you open the gate for one rider might that certainly open the floodgates for five more riders to leave in the same fashion and what if you're a team like intermarche or a lower budget team or a Cofidis, yeah. and I'll mention Vassar in a second, you know, <laughs> you, you do a really good bit of scouting, and yep. this sort of happened with Rodriguez and Movistar, but you do a, a really good bit of scouting, you get a hidden gem, you sign him to four years, you take a big risk, but you're paying him 150 grand a year, and he turns out to be a rider who's really giving you 1.2, 1.5 million worth of value, like you can't afford to pay him 
what the big teams are going to pay him, but you did the scouting, you did the development, you had a good atmosphere for him, you didn't do anything wrong, and they're like, nah, I'm leaving. Like, that's tough for the smaller teams as well. So there is, I think the UCI really has to look into the buyout system. And yep. instead of having these, everyone knows there's buyouts. They yep. Okay, they don't go directly between teams, but right, because it's not officially sanctioned, it means that the smart teams can't profit from it explicitly. And if DSM were like literally openly going to other teams, being like, yeah, his buyout is X amount, yeah. then they can make money from it, the smaller teams, and not get fucked. So I think they need to look into the buyout system a little bit. To If it's not going to be enforced, then you may as well make it a structured system that can benefit yeah. the uh, smaller teams. Um, yep, I, I see that. I see that. I'm also interested in like a loan agreement for reserve rights to be loaned out <laughs> to to be loaned out to to like second tier world tour teams. For example, if you take a look at um, let's say Anton Marche could then start, or or even Unowex could loan Johannes Stonemeted from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying the thought process of this. It might not be ideal, but it's fun if you think about it. <laughs> If they got a tour invite, would Yumbo rather <laughs> Stan admit it got Tour de France experience? Yeah. To ride. There's something there. Without pressure. Like, why would that be? But he'd be. Nah, he, I mean. But it doesn't sound that ridiculous when you put it like yeah. that. It happens in football <laughs> all the time. Exactly. If there's no space in the team for the first 11, then they loan them out. You might be on something there, Benji. Um, I think so. I should. I should actually propose it to um to my <laughs> my great friend David Laparcion. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, the extra before we actually talk about maybe the sporting aspect, which we haven't mentioned at all yet, just the uh, sort of speculating on some of the statements that have come out. R Richard Plugger, the principal of Yumbo or owner of Yumbo of Eastman Lisa Bike, rather. Um, announced the signing and Cedric Vasseur, the equivalent at Cofidus, said on Twitter, uh, Twitter is so back, by the way, what is that again for the AIGCP official president? You have to respect the rules and resign immediately. Get out. So I don't... <laughs> I don't really if they get know. out, that does it for me. Yeah. <laughs> get and out. like spaces between the punctuation, <laughs> so immediately, two or three spaces, triple exclamation mark, space, 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 get out. <laughs> <laughs> Go to tweet, dude. Um, First of I don't, all, for context, I don't know what AIGCP, rules he means. AIGCP is like an organization of the the teams within cycling, right? Is how we see it. And Richard Plugge is the is the president for that. I don't know when he was voted into power, but I feel like it's become very clear that in the last year and a half, half of the teams in that organization hate him. Is how it feels to me, the managers at least. Like this, this competition there. So I, I don't believe Plugger will be the president of this for too much longer, whenever the next election is. And it's also off topic. It's also one of the reasons that I don't believe that the one cycling thing with Plugger at the head of it will work, due to the fact that there's so many people in cycling that just aren't very, yeah, don't just don't like Richard that much in the sport. And that's why I'm like. That's going to be difficult to bring everybody everybody together to the table to negotiate things. But that's completely off topic. But Radio Cycling Podcasts have been talking about this a fair bit, actually, throughout the last six months, yeah. how the atmosphere in the AIGCP is really, really deteriorated. Um, and it's not, it doesn't seem to be functioning uh, particularly well. On your second imagine... point, yeah, well, like if this is the public... This is a public back and forth. Imagine what's being said behind closed doors. And then yeah. to your point, re one cycling. I don't know if it was Radio Cycling Podcast or the Cycling Podcast. I can't remember. Uh, but there was an interview with Vortas who also was like, yeah, you know what? Also not the biggest fan of Young and Plugger, but... <laughs> They got a point with the one cycling thing. So, you know, we'll look into it. We're not going to cut our nose off to spite our face. Now, I think that's a, 
quite a mature approach, actually. I think so as well, actually. if it's a good deal, but maybe not all the other teams will feel that way. Yeah, but I also recall hearing that these other teams also weren't even told or asked about it in the first place and were kind of kept outside of the whole... The whole discussion in the first yeah, place. Imagine I feel like... trying to keep <laughs> negotiations confidential with 20, well, to a cycle. It's a, it's a leak fest. <laughs> All they want to do is contact their local journal and give them the, the docs. Um, anyway. Yeah, so this back is to topic. What a drama, dach. Oh, my God. Um, big drama. Let's talk about, well, wait. Till more info comes out but yeah don't really know how this will play out yet i agree with benji very unlikely that a court is gonna reverse it and <laughs> force a rider to ride for the team that doesn't mean they won't lose in court as we saw with van art and noins uh but let's talk about the sporting aspect which you mentioned a little bit benji yes. Do you think this is the right move for Alter Brooks? Is there space for him at Jumbo uh, at Visma Lisa bike? Yeah, I think I'll keep it short. Like like I mentioned earlier, like I see the possibility for him to improve, and I see opportunities in races for him to to still shine. Yes, there's other youngsters he might have to compete with if they make a step forward. For example, Matteo Jorgensen, for example, he's shown himself in the likes of Romandy, but not necessarily has has shown the step up in in races where Eitelbrooks have done it, which is, for example, in, in the Vuelta, Eitelbrooks has done it. So Eitelbrooks is a step further when it comes to GC, maybe not as good when it comes to time trial, but maybe Visma can, can help in that stuff. So like, I think there's opportunity to race. I think there's opportunity when it comes to, um, when it comes to improvement. I don't know how he's going to deal with the internal battles with competition within the team. Because if he had trouble with Vlazov as a co-leader at Bora, then good fucking luck with what you have at Jumbo Visma as well. So, like, it's not sorry, but yeah, that, but... that's the same exact thing with what was that other transfer where, where I said the same thing? Something with going from, uh, ah, oh, oh, the there was the 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 rumor that Kian would be joining Grupama at some point, oh, and I, I had the same it. exact comment. As in going from the the fire yeah. into the fucking pan. Because now you're <laughs> going to have to handle Godu. <laughs> I think there is more competition at Bora when you consider probably riders you don't think are GC riders at the front of your mm-hmm. mind, but actually do operate that way. So you've got, obviously, Roglic. He's going to Tour that- de France. That's clear. So Tour's off the table. Jai Hindley. Yep. Okay, makes sense. Vlasov, also GC rider. But Sergio Aguita, Leonard Kamner, Danny Martinez, these are also guys who expect and will ride in one week's, especially as GC riders. So, I mean, you can say the same for Stan, admit it, Tullet, Jorgensen, uh, Vingegaard, Koos, but, or even Kreisweig. But I think. Uh, yeah, let's just... Oh, Danny Martinez is on a four-year now. So it wasn't a one-year. <laughs> four-year deal. Um, okay. Well, at least according to PCS. PCS says that Autobooks is on Yumbo next year. So I guess that's the ultimate arbiter of it. Um, so I think yeah, <laughs> and, there's equivalent and competition, maybe. Not just PCS said that, but the Bora website uses a, <laughs> an API to get their information <laughs> from PCS. Brutal. So the Bora website <laughs> says he's writing for Visma for the next four years, which... If that isn't proof, I don't know about it, man. <laughs> That's tough. Um. <laughs> but like from from Yumbo's perspective, from Visma's pr- perspective, I can see it as well. I've said it before. Like he he fits in the picture of potentially replacing Roglic in the future. Not yet there, but might get there in the future. The only co- uh, the only annoying thing with this transfer in my head is that sorry, but I have I'm so done with. Top rider with with water flowing to the ocean. That's a, an expression in Belgium for the rich get richer. And that's the same with UAE. That's the same with Visma. The talent is always going to the same teams. And I want it to be spread more against world, uh, across World Tour. But I guess that's something that happens in a lot of sports. And cycling yeah. has to handle that as well. And 
yeah, I just want more competition. It seems like, yeah, Bora, Ineos, now Little Trek, UAE, Visma, those five share the riders. Like Adam Yates goes from Ineos to UAE. August Philipson goes to Little Trek. Otterbrooks goes Bora, Visma, Lisa Bike. Albert Roglic Philipson. goes Visma, Lisa Bike, Bora, pardon? Close enough. Albert Phillips in August, which is that. That's the Ineos rider. I, yeah. Well, <laughs> All on. these youngsters, man. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just create a hybrid, I do feel like... <laughs> hybrid American <laughs> Danish superpower. <laughs> I do feel like there's a, there's a space between you in Visma and the others in terms of their talent acquisition. As in, Yes, Ineos is getting the talent, but I feel like they stagnate at a certain point. Yeah, Ineos don't seem to be... They just had a reshuffle, which we might mention quickly at the end of this, but they just, yeah, they don't seem to be getting anyone like that. Um, but yeah, I think there's plenty of opportunities for Oderbrook, see how he develops. I mean, youngest winner of the Tour de Lavenir for a long time, teenage winner of Tour de Lavenir in dominant fashion, very, very good on the Tourmalet stage and the Vuelta against him pretty decent riders uh quite consistent hasn't shown the top top what's uh yet but he's 20 years old so i'm sure there's plenty of time for that and uh yeah i can't wait to see how this plays out and also whether he fit, you know how he fits in at visma lisa bike as well because yep if you hear oh, I don't want to share this with whoever, then it's like, well, maybe Bora wasn't the issue. <laughs> and, and the thing as well is, like, outside of that aspect, I also have the opinion of there's a lot of people, like, saying, uh, oh, poor Keon for being in the situation, two teams playing tug of war with him in the middle. He wouldn't be in the situation if it wasn't for him deciding to be in the situation. His... Agent was okay with talking to teams, so that means that Keon was okay to talking to other teams, which means that he should have seen this coming too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, let us know what you think, though. Uh, probably yep. echo Benji's comments that the rich get richer, um, and <laughs> we'll probably see Osbrooks doing well just in a different jersey. Of Visma next year, most likely. But yeah, we'll monitor this and maybe more information will come out. Certainly, if he doesn't turn up at team camp or we you know if he's turning up at whoever's team camp next week, this is going to be an ongoing uh, story. But in other news, maybe a little bit not as big in terms of an emergency podcast, but mm-hmm. or for us as a. Uh, oh, you know, I typed it in your screen, it is, and it tried to take me to the car. Um, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. They want to send me one. No. By the way, can I just comment about the fact I don't think I've never bought a, a new car and I never will. Who buys new cars? What is the point of buying new cars? I agree. I agree with you, Benji. Just buy bikes. They're too expensive as well, to be clear. Like that's the case. Have you see my still. bike. I've been I've been on a oh, self plug. I've been just going hard with the weight loss since I got back to Australia. I've been running a thousand calorie deficit a day. I can't do anything. <laughs> I do my exercise in the morning. I just lie down. Uh, thank God there's been no work on. Um, but yeah, my bike is a piece of shit. So the I treat it so bad. It's aluminium, and I love it. The the I should the power meters don't work. But fuck me, Shimano eleven speed fifty eight hundred. Might be the best groups that ever created. This thing <laughs> has the ocean. I've left it here for like three years over so it back and forth from Andorra. It has the sea going straight in. It's rusted. <laughs> it works. It shifts perfectly. <laughs> no noise. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm like, how is this even possible? This thing should be broken. <laughs> um, but yeah, power meters, a bit, a bit, you know, <laughs> touch and go. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> New car, Benji, I'm with you on that. With you on that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a anyway. waste of money. Anyway, Ineos talking yeah, about... Yeah, why would you buy something when the depreciation expensive? curve is steepest? What, sorry? Well, like, a cars depreciate the most 
yeah. straight after you buy them. And then the depreciation curve is flat usually after they're seven years or five, seven years old. Oh. That's the best time to buy them secondhand. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Ineos Grenadiers Ineos on 6 December. Changed their leadership somehow. Yes. I'll read the press release. They announced it. <laughs> it's a little bit less controversial. Ineos Grenadiers hey. announced key appointments. We are about as rusty as that group set of yours today. <laughs> Ah, well, I'm halfway through my, my long black. <laughs> uh, basically, Rod Ellingworth resigned a couple of weeks ago and John Allett has been appointed the team's CEO with immediate effect. That's confusing to me because mm-hmm. I'm not sure if Ellingworth was the CEO. His official title was Deputy Principal alongside Brailsford. So... Mm-hmm. Allard, and then I'll continue with the statement. Allard has worked with the team since 2022, most recently as managing director. You will have responsibility for the day-to-day running of the Ineos Grenadiers, reporting to Sir Dave Brailsford and Jean-Claude Blanc at Ineos Sport. Uh, and then the other appointments. The team's performance team will be bolstered by the appointment of Dr. Scott Draw as performance director. Draw, who's previously worked for the team and British Cycling, etc. He's worked in elite sport for quite a long time has a breadth of experience across elite sporting organizations, including England Rugby, UK Mate. Sport, Team GB, etc. One could say he has a lot of experience in a drawer. His top drawer signing. And his most recent position was head of sport at Millfield School. Uh, yep. So, And if you don't know Millfield School, they probably have a sports annual sports budget that exceeds half the World Tour teams. I have bad memories of really? rugby against them. Yep. <laughs> and Steve Cummings has been appointed as the director of racing. That was Roger Hammond previously. Okay. And Imanol Erviti is a DS, which is quite nice, Ooh. I think. Your reaction. Yeah, surprising maybe. that it's not Movistar in my head. As in, I know. He's been so long at Movistar. I'd expect him to be at Movistar when he comes to Diaz, but instantly to Ineos. So there's like a, a carousel because. A lot of the time when I feel like I expect a certain rider to be a Diaz at that team that he retires at, he then shows up at a random other team, like Israel or something. Does that happen <laughs> with Hausler or someone? Hausler went to Bora? No? Am I stupid? He obviously decided to give up the chance of winning Roubaix. Yeah, yeah, he, he went like... to Bora and he was never on them. But he's you know, <laughs> half German or German speaker, so he yeah. lives in Germany. Uh, but yeah, what do you make of these signings, Betty? I think what's clear to me is they're looking, apart from Imanol, uh, yeah. who I think is a really good signing, actually, because he's very, you know, nice guy, extremely well respected, and they have a a large Hispanophone contingent in the team, and also for mentoring Carlos Rodriguez, I think incredibly important signing. Uh, yeah. Why they got him, I don't know. Maybe better conditions. Ineos could probably afford to pay 20, 25 grand more per DS than Movistar. That's the reality, yeah. but it might not just be money. Uh, I'm somewhat surprised they moved Allet to CEO, but I guess they wanted to. It looks to me like they've split Ellingworth's role in two. I might be mm-hmm. just because they've changed titles, but it looks to me like Allet is more into like the business side of things or yeah. like the day-to-day running as CEO and then and draw Scott like Draw will be more like signing recommendations and yeah. and things like that, whereas Ellingworth, I think, was doing both. I might be misinterpreting it, but that's how I read it. And like the thing about the feeling that we had about, or at least I had about Ineos in the last year, is that I never really felt where their identity was going as a team. I felt like they were trying to reset with some youngsters in the last two years, but that idea kind of stagnated, it felt like. And yes, Carlos Rodriguez did step up and did well at the Tour de France this year. But outside of that, I feel like Pitcock has somewhat stagnated in some shape or form. Yes, he won Strade, but Vanderpool was completely out of form. And when it comes to the other competition, he was basically trying to beat Benoit and so forth. So that's not the top level of like Pogacars of the world. So, and, and in Monuments, he came short a bit. In GC, he hasn't made that breakthrough yet. So, there's also the youngsters that some of them feel like they have 
they have really stagnated and obviously there's one Josh Darling that hasn't stagnated that's a very obvious one he's made yeah, a major yes. step forward and could be a big thing British cash but there was something there and then the whole drama when it comes to the transfers I still don't know the in-depth of it but there were rumors that the transfer plans were ripped up that they then had to kind of restart even though they signed one of the same riders which is false <laughs> than the one that was already rumored maybe the budget for it changed who knows but isn't that problem like still here had in change. the structure? The Tell structure me? that created that problem is still here. It says in the press release, Dave Brailsford will be reported mm-hmm. to, and it seems like at any time can come down and veto, like, who's in charge? Yeah, but... And how, how hands-on is Brailsford? Seems like the, if the Manchester United thing happens, it might not be very hands on. If the rumors of the transfers that were happening before he came in to rip it up, rumor r- reportedly, were true. If those rumors were true when it comes to transfers, then I think the issue is also in the in the layer below, and I don't necessarily see him rim- ripping up ripping up those plans as a bad thing. If if they don't seem like they could build a future for the team, then I'm fine with it them being ripped up, you know? So yeah, yeah. was it was the issue that Dave ripped up the plans or was the issue that Rod came up with a shit transfer list in the first place? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like we don't know who initially was the proponent. Verona false was, was a, rumored? Yeah, who was the ultimate proponent for the original false contract? Who ripped it up or nixed it or or Verona? We we don't know um which way it really came, so or, yeah. or went. But I still see that as a bit of a structural problem, to be honest. Um, yeah. And time will tell how it plays out. Uh, because, yeah, there's lots of riders on the market yeah. for 2025. Exactly. I don't know how to judge this, to be honest. So, so evidently, I feel like we need to to eat some months of cycling before we can actually start judging this. We need to see the structure in action. Because maybe this this alert man and this drawer man are really fucking good at their job. We don't know yet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We don't know. Uh, and it's even if even if the team goes one way or goes the other way, it's even still hard to exactly attribute yeah. success or credit to the staff members because you don't exactly yeah. know like who was the person who did a good signing or not. It's different from. Israel, back when they were signing full sung for three years and so forth, you yeah, know the person yeah. that was responsible for those transfers was being shit. It's different compared to when it comes to Lotto Sudan in the past, when it comes to the signings of oh, Ewan Tula. for two million, Dagen Gold for X amount, Gilbert for uh, seven figures. You know the issue is with the person that signed off on those deals. Ash Dezer, I don't remember who was responsible for anything because I haven't followed that really, so... But <laughs> it'd be love it'd be the team principal signing GVA. Bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do, we don't know because uh, as I said, there's still Brailsford and then Allah and then Draw, so it's it's tough to know. Yeah. Uh but anyway, that was a little update on that. Just maybe more for the more of an esoteric thing, management changes. But in your, you know, one of the biggest teams in the world, and I think especially for Anglophones the biggest uh, Anglophone-based team in the world. Uh, no offense, EF or Jayco. Okay. That it, ben, that's you. the update. Before we All finish right, off, I do want to shout out. Oh, yeah, I do want to shout out my own YouTube content because uh, why not? We're here. Why not? I just uploaded a video where I did some Zwift racing. I'm going to upload my first ever attempt of Al de Zwift in the next week, hopefully. So stay tuned for that on the Benji Nelson channel. All right. Go check that out. Check out Benji's Zwifting and general uh, journey. I don't have that, so you'll just see me. Um, I don't know. I'm so tired of them. <laughs> uh, by Christmas, <laughs> I knock it down to 500 calorie deficit. Don't worry, I'm not doing a thousand calories for too long. I'm doing like a one month shock, and then um, we'll be flying in 2024. Don't worry, I'm getting a head start on the new year, new me. Uh, but that's all from us. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you with a team preview probably sometime this week. Till then, ciao.